Hello, Rick from Supai here, and on today's tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is how to make optical artwork that looks something like this. Now, we're going to be using a program called Code Life, and we're going to be writing some code from scratch using OpenGL shaders. Now, this artwork I didn't make up. This is actually inspired by another artist. This artist, uh, Bridget Riley, born in London in 1931. She used to do this by hand with actual paint and the art that she made was really big. This piece is actually a meter and a half wide by a meter and a half tall and it's called Fall. So we're going to basically recreate this using code. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is paint with code. So the program that we're going to be using for this tutorial is called Code Life, and Code Life is a real-time GPU shader editor, which basically means we can write some code and we get something out the other end, mainly visual effects. Now, you can download this for free uh, without a license. I do have a license for this, uh, but I recommend you get one if you are using it quite a lot. So what does this look like if we open it up? Now, what we'll get if we open it up is something that looks like this. Now, this is the default in here. Essentially, there's two parts of this. There's the vertex. Vertex is kind of just like this is a flat area, and fragment is what it looks like. Now, what we have is a default in here. Basically, what we're getting is everything being colored in using these things. Now, of course, what we want to do is this is quite complicated math. We're not going to do anything quite as complex as this. I can actually zoom out by using my mouse wheel as well, so I can actually see the whole thing. Now. I want to make this a square, so my resolution I'm going to put as a thousand over on the right hand side, and a thousand. Oh, maybe not a hundred, a thousand. There we go. So this is basically my artwork. Now at the moment we've got some complex math that basically colors it in in this way. Now there's two parts to this. The first part is the texture coordinates, whereabouts are we talking about on this? And the second part is what I've got highlighted here, what color is this? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this piece by piece. At the moment, we're going to get rid of this complex math and basically say this is going to be for now 0 0.1. This one is going to be 0 0.1. And this last one is going to be 0 0.1. And this gives us a white color. Now, why does this give us a white color? Well, essentially what we're saying is for every single point in this color, this is going to be a vector 4. Vector is just basically four numbers together. These four numbers are the red green, blue, and alpha channel. Now, because they're all on and they're all full blast, this is going to give us red, green, and blue mixed together, which gives us white. Now, of course, we can change some of these numbers and say, let's turn off green. Uh, if we turn off green, of course, this gives us magenta because this is red and blue mixed together. Again, if I turn off the blue channel, this will give me red, of course, because it's only the red channel on there. Now, if we were going to make something that's grayscale, like the final design, all of these channels are going to be the same thing. So for instance, if I'm something like 0, 0, 0, this gives us a black color, it disappears. If this is 1, 1, 1, this gives us a white color. If this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's going to give us a gray color. So to hold that as a bit of information, I'm going to add some space in here. The thing I'm going to put in here is float color. Now float is just a number with a decimal place on here, like 1.0. For now, we're going to make this equal to 1.0 and give it a semicolon. Now, what we want to put here into here, here, and here. All the same, we're going to write the word color, which I've just made as a float above color and color, which means now if I change this number to something like zero, it goes black, 0.5 or 0.4, it's going to give us a mid gray color because it's halfway between white and black. Now, the other thing we need to think about for this is we have a texture. Now, each point on this square is going to have a certain number in two directions. It's going to have a cross and down. Now this is given to us by these texture coordinates here. And by default, as part of code life, it basically wants to put the center point in the middle. For us, we want to put this top left at zero, zero, all the way to one over here, going across and down one at this bottom point. So I'm just going to move some of this math from here instead. So I'm going to take this just keep that line really, really simple. So we've got UV. UV just stands for these coordinates on this square and the texture coordinates. So the, the texture coordinates are the same as this. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So 0 to 1. Now what we want to do in here is basically color this in a certain way. We don't want it to be a full color. Instead, what we want to do is basically give it a color depending on what we want to go across. 
Now, this is going to be the stripes later on, but for now, we're just going to make a gradient. So instead of this being always 0 0.5, what we can do is take the texture coordinates, I'm going to delete this, and instead use UV dot X. Now, what this does is it picks the number from how far across we are and gives it a color based on that. So on the left hand side, this is zero, zero. So basically there's no color over here, so it's black and it's full color as we go across. So in the middle at 0 0.5, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in this bit over here. And this gives us a gray color. Now, what we want to do is basically say, well, I want this to have some waves. I want this to look a little bit more fun than just a gradient. So we'll add bits to this. But essentially what we have in here is this UV, which goes from zero to one. I want to repeat this in lots of different ways. I basically want to move it around and kind of distort it somehow. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some space between this UV and this color. And instead what we're going to say is, well, in this X direction, let's multiply that. Let's instead go from zero to one, but say let's go from zero to 40. Let's make 40 stripes in the long term. So we're going to do uv dot x and then we're going to multiply this to be equal to 40.0 and this is going to have a semicolon on here so you might notice now that we have this very tiny gradient over here and it's all in white and essentially what we have is 0 to 40 so obviously if you have 0 to 40 this color runs out of numbers so this is full blast it's broken past the 1 and now at this end it's 40 so how do we make this repeat and loop back to the start? Well, essentially kind of around here, we're at 20. I don't want it to be 20. I just want it to repeat every single time. Now what we can do here is use something called a fraction, basically take that endpoint. Now in other programming languages, it's called a modulo. What we can do is uv.x, and this is gonna be equal to a fraction that take the last part of the number in round brackets, uv.x and round brackets and semicolon. So no, now what we have is 40 gradients and it goes up, resets, goes up, resets, goes up, resets. Now if I change this number here, 40 to something like 30 or 10, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of these. Now what we can start to think about is how do we move this around? Now what we have is the same thing here. We've got this UV, the texture in the X direction. We've multiplied it by 10 and then basically chopped off that end part and said, repeat each time. And that's given us a color. But what we can start to do now is move this around in a wave. Now, how do we go about doing that? Now, one thing that we can use is something called a sine wave. This is part of math to basically say, have this wave going on, not across, but down. So what we're gonna do is before all of this stuff is we're gonna say float movement. And this is going to be equal to, for now, let's just give it a certain number, something like 0 0.05 or 4, and a semicolon in there. Now what we can do is shift this uv.x by this movement. So essentially what we're doing is we're trying to make a wiggly wave rather than these straight lines. So how do we do this? We're going to do uv.x plus equals this movement. So this has just shifted this over by 0 0.05. And if I make this number a little bit bigger or smaller, you'll see this kind of shift around. This is basically just shifting this across. We're saying in the X direction, shift everything over by this set number. Now, of course, what we want to do is not move it over by set number, but we want to base it going down this coordinate system. So instead, what we're going to say is let's times this by uv, not dot x, but dot y. So you might notice now there's a bit of a diagonal shift and this becomes very clear if you make this number quite large, even to the point of making it one, this is now diagonal. So basically as we go down, we're shifting it over by the same amount. So if I'm at halfway down, this is shifted over by halfway across as well. Now, of course, what we want to do is not shift it over by a set amount, but instead what we can now do is pass it into one of these waves. So instead, I'm going to pass it in here as a wave, this sign and brackets around this. So you might notice now there's a little bit of slight movement going on here. Now, this is obviously 
not enough. We want it to be a little bit more than this. So let's take this coordinate system and multiply it. So we're going to multiply it by, let's say, 13.0. That's pretty big. Look at that. That movement is going across now. Ooh, pretty big. Now, what we can do is say this movement across is way too much. So the 0.1 should be a lot less. It should be 0 0.05 again. Now we have a wave. This wave across and down is because we've got these sine waves kicking in. Now, of course, what we can do in here is make them move based on time too. So time is being passed in as part of this clock. We have a float called time. Then this is a number that's going up. This is being passed in up here. This uniform. Uniform is basically things in the sidebar float called time. We can use this number here and add it in to our wave. So let's add into our wave time. Now it's moving. Let's slow that down a little bit. Maybe let's multiply that by 0.2. So it's moving just a little bit slower. So we have something going on here. Now what I like to do is add multiple waves together here. So after this, I'm going to add a plus. I'm going to go into the next line, press tab a few times just to line this up. And I'm going to do the same thing as above, something like 0 0.05 times sine and same thing, just going to copy this in exactly the same way, times 0.2. So this just duplicates the wave twice, so there's twice as much movement, which kind of makes sense. But now what I can do is play around with some of these numbers. So instead of this being 13, maybe something like 17. So I've got these kind of two waves now that kind of intermix together. Now, of course, I can change the time of this, maybe 0.3. So now there's one moves slightly different than the, than the other, maybe 0.6. You can see these more natural waves starting to appear. And of course, I could take this wave and be, well, this could be a completely different number. Maybe this is 0.13 as well. So we have these waves going on now. And I can make this really, really natural. Now I'm going to change some of these, maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.3, maybe it's a little bit too quick. But I have some movement going on now. Now there's one thing that you might notice. These aren't the waves that I actually want. What I actually want is kind of a white wave then a black wave. And at the moment, this is using this gradient. I've got black to white, black to white, black to white. So I've got a nice effect, but it's not the one that I actually want. And that's all to do with this bit here. Now, how do I actually go about changing this? Now, what I'm going to do is just quickly remove a lot of what I have. So instead of this movement being on, I'm going to remove it. It's back to what it was. I'm going to add these two slashes at the start. Same thing here, multiplied by 10. I'm going to get rid of that for now. We'll keep this one because it's not really doing anything right now. And basically what we have is a zero to one. We're getting this kind of gradient effect. Now what I want is basically instead of this color, I want to go basically this half is black and then this half is white. Now I can do this using this GLSL, which is this language that I'm writing in, uh, Open uh, OpenGL, oh, graphics language, shader language. GLSL. So what I can say in here is something called a step. So I'm going to write step and then round brackets 0 0.5 comma and then round brackets. So now half is now black. This is going to give you number 0 and as soon as it hits 0 0.5 it's going to go instantly to white, the 1. And if I can change this number now, something like 0 0.5, 0 0.25 for instance, this just shifts over 0 0.15. So 0 to 0 to 0 0.5 is there, and that's black, and then the rest of it is in white. Now, of course, if I turn this stuff back on, there we go, we might notice that we've got these waves starting to appear, and this could be 0.5. Now, what you might notice is if, if you zoom in, it's kind of quite a hard edge here. It's quite pixelated, as you might notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off again. I'm going to put these slashes back in, and we're going to redo this in a different way. Now, what I can use instead of step is something called a smooth step. So I'm just going to write the word smooth in front of this, and I need to add in one more number, something like 0 0.7 comma. So what I have now is everything from 0 to 0 0.5 is in black, then there's a fade, and then 0 0.7 to 1 is in white. So this is kind of how I want to make my effect. So I want to have this kind of like wave in and wave out. I've only got one wave in currently. So the way that I'm going to do this is I want about 25% to fade in. So where's 25%? 0 0.25. Maybe let's add in 0.5 each side. So 0.2 and 0.3. So here 
right in the middle. This kind of like gray line in the middle is right in the middle. And we want to kind of remove this in the opposite, opposite direction. So on this color, I'm gonna go underneath and minus another smooth step in the opposite way. So 0 0.7 comma 0.8 comma UV dot X. So I've got this fading in and then going in the opposite way, we're minusing that in the opposite way. So basically I'm fading in, then fading out. So I'll fade in and minus fade out. And now what I can do is remove these lines and say, let's uncomment that back in. So we're getting some movement on these gradient effects. And how many do we want? We want 10 in here. Now in the final one, what we could say is something like 40. So we have something that looks a little bit more like that. So in the final version of what we have, we want this kind of top area to be not as much movement as the bottom area. So again, what we can do is say, well, on this movement, this top area, which is currently zero, and this is at the bottom is one, because we're not multiplying it by anything right now, is we want to basically multiply this. So we can say this multiplied by uv dot y. And we can see now this kind of movement is going more increased as we get down. So this at the top is zero. There's no movement at all. As we get down to the bottom, it goes to one and it gets more extreme. Now, one thing that we can also do in here just to make it a little bit more extreme is say, maybe we'll take this number and make it go to the power of something. So around this, I'm going to add the power PAW comma 2.0 to the power of two to get this kind of more extreme effect. I can play around with some of these numbers, 0.5 for instance, that feels pretty good. And I can start to play around with some of this very, very quickly. Now, what we have now is pretty much what the final design is meant to look like. But what I can start to play around with is maybe I don't want it to be black and white. So how do we actually fix this to not be black and white? Now, we've got this kind of color scheme here, which gives us basically a number between zero and one. But essentially what we want to do is mix it between two colors. So below this, I'm going to add in something extra. This is just a little extra thing we're going to add in. A vector four is going to be a color one. Now let's make this just a normal vec four with red channel on, no green, no blue, but full alpha. And let's make a vector four, color two is vector four with no red, uh, let's add in no there, and full blue, so it's red and blue. Now what we can say is, well, this thing isn't actually, a, it's actually a number rather than a color, because we're just passing these things in here. So instead, we're just gonna rename this color to something like T. This will break this for now. So T, the color is not identified. We haven't made it yet. And essentially what we can say is, we wanna blend color one and color two, depending on this value of T. So last thing we're gonna do is VEC4, the final color is gonna be a mix between color one, color two, and this T value that we've just made. And then what we wanna do is color shouldn't be in three times. We're just gonna pass it in as color. There we go. So we've mixed these very, very quickly. This is obviously very bright. And we can change around some of these colors now. So maybe it's something that looks like that maybe a little bit different, maybe something like that, make it a little bit more different as well. And obviously what we can do is play around with some of these numbers. Maybe we wanna make it more extreme. We can play around with some of these numbers up here. We can change how this looks down the thing. We can change pretty much anything you want. But what we've done is made some optical art using not many lines of code, under 20 lines of code we've done, and we've got something that looks pretty cool.